This reading on worship is by Thomas Brooks and is produced by Still Waters Revival Books. Be resolute, standing up for purity of religion and for purity of worship and ordinances, in opposition to all mixtures and corruptions whatsoever, by Thomas Brooks, from the works of Thomas Brooks, Volume 4. Evidence and declare the truth and reality of your holiness by a resolute standing up for purity of religion and for purity of worship and ordinances in opposition to all mixtures and corruptions whatsoever. O sirs, the great God stands upon nothing more in all the world than upon purity in his worship. James 1.27 there is nothing that does so provoke and exasperate God against a people as mixtures in his worship and service. Matthew twenty one twelve thirteen, John two fifteen to seventeen. Pollutions in worship do sadly reflect upon the name of God, the honour of God, the truth of God, and the wisdom of God and therefore his heart rises against them. The very spirit, life, and soul of the second commandment lies in these words, Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image. In matters of divine worship, God abhors that men should mix their water with his wine, their dross with his gold, their chaff with his wheat. When once men come to be so bold as to defile his worship with their mixtures, then God is resolved to be a swift and terrible witness against them, as you may clearly see by comparing those notable places of Scripture together in the margin. Leviticus 10, 1-2 Ezekiel five eleven to twelve and twenty three thirty eight to thirty nine, Jeremiah seven twenty nine thirty, Ezekiel eight seventeen eighteen, Revelation two twenty two to twenty three, Deuteronomy four two, and twelve thirty two. There is no sin that does so incense and provoke God to jealousy and wrath against a people as mixtures in worship. God can bear with defilements anywhere rather than in his worship and service, and that first, because mixtures in worship are cross to God's express commands. And who art thou, O man, that darest run cross to his commands? who can command thee into the dust, yea, into hell at pleasure. Secondly, because this is to accuse the blessed scripture of insufficiency. For if the scripture be a sufficient rule to order, guide, and direct us in all matters of worship, then how dost thou, O man, detract from the sufficiency of the scripture, who minglest thine own are other men's inventions with divine institutions, and settest up thy post by God's posts? O oh, sirs, the scriptures are sufficient to direct us fully in everything that belongs to the worship and service of God, so as that we need not depend upon the wisdom, prudence, care, or authority of any men under heaven to direct us in matters of worship, 2 Timothy 3, 16-17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The scriptures are sufficient to inform the ignorant, to confute the erroneous, to reform the vicious, and to guide and direct, support and comfort those that are gracious. Here a lamb may wade, and an elephant may swim, 
Here is milk for babes and meat for strong men. Here is comfort for the afflicted and succor for the tempted and ease for the troubled and light for the clouded and enlargement for the straitened. Oh, how full of light, how full of life, how full of love, how full of sweetness, how full of goodness, how full of righteousness and holiness is every chapter and every verse in every chapter, yea, in every line in every verse. The scriptures are sufficient to direct us as to all the parts of worship, as one, that of public prayer, two, and that of reading and expounding, three, and that of preaching, four, and that of singing, five, and that of the seals, both of baptism and the supper of the Lord. The rabbins say that a mountain of matter hangs upon every word of Scripture, yea, upon every tittle of Scripture. God never sends his people to the shop of men's traditions and inventions, but he still sends them to the scripture, Isaiah a twenty, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light or no morning in them. Chapter thirty four sixteen. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate, for my mouth it had commanded, and his spirit it had gathered them. And in the New Testament, Christ sends his hearers to the Scriptures, John 5.39. Search the Scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. The Greek word epiva, that is here rendered search, signifies a strict, narrow, curious, diligent search. We must search the scriptures as we would search for gold, or for some precious stones which we would fain find. We must search the scriptures as hunters seek and search out their game. And so the Apostle sends his hearers to the Scriptures, 2 Peter 1, 19-22, as to a surer word than that of Revelation. All which speaks out the sufficiency of the Scripture to direct us in all matters that concern our internal or eternal welfare. Oh, that you would forever remember these two things. One, first, that that which bred the popish religion, superstition, idolatry, and pompous worship, was men's departing from the word, and not cleaving to the word as a sufficient rule to direct them in all matters of worship. And two, secondly, that that which had occasioned all those discords, divisions, heats, heart-burnings, animosities, and contentions about ceremonies, liturgy, forms, gestures, has been men's not keeping close to the blessed word of God. When men forsake this perfect rule, whither won't they run, and what won't they do? Ah, who art thou, O vain man, that accuseth the holy scriptures of insufficiency? And how wilt thou blush, and be ashamed and confounded, when in the great day the Lord shall plead the excellency and vindicate the sufficiency and authority of his blessed book, in opposition to all the mixtures of men's traditions with divine institutions? Thirdly, God won't nor can't bear with mixtures in his worship and service because to bring them in is to accuse and charge God with weakness and folly, as if God were not careful enough nor faithful enough. Hebrews 3, 4-6 Nor mindful enough, nor wise enough, 
nor prudent nor understanding enough to order, direct and guide his people in the matters of his worship, but must be beholding to the wisdom, prudence and care of man. John 4, 23-24 Of vain man, of sinful man, of vile and unworthy man, of weak and foolish man, to complete, perfect, and make up something that was wanting in his worship and service. Psalm 39, 5 Fourthly, God won't bear with mixtures in his worship and service because all mixtures debases the worship and service of God and makes the worship a vain worship. Isaiah 29, 13-14 Matthew 25, 3, 6, 8-9 As the mixing of water with wine is the debasing of the wine and the mixing of tin with silver or brass with gold is the debasing of the silver and gold. So for men to mix and mingle their traditions and inventions with God's institutions is to debase the worship and service of God and to detract from the excellency and glory of it. The kings and princes of this world have most severely punished such who, by their base mixtures, have embased their coin. And there is a day coming wherein the King of Kings will most severely punish all such who have embased his worship and service by mixing their Romish traditions with his holy institutions. Revelation 22.18 For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And no wonder, for what horrible pride, presumption, stoutness, and baseness of spirit is it in foolish man to be so bold with the great God as to dare to mix anything of his own with his worship and service, which according to divine institution, is so perfect and so complete, God will never bear it to see men lay their dirt upon his gold and to put their rags upon his royal robes. Ah, Christians, Christians, evidence your holiness by standing up for holy ordinances and pure worship in opposition to all mixtures whatsoever. Oh, Don't you touch a polluted worship. Don't you plead and contend for a polluted worship, but let Baal plead for Baal. And though all the world should wander after the beast, yet don't you wander. And though every forehead should have the mark of the beast upon it, yet do you abhor his mark, and whatever else it be that does but smell and savour of the beast. It is observable that in kings' and princes' courts, children, fools, and the rude rabble are much taken with fine pictures and rich shows and glistering, gaudy cloths. But such as are wise, serious, grave statesmen, they mind not, they regard not such poor things, They look upon those things as things that are much below the nobleness and the greatness of their spirits, who have honourable objects and the great and weighty affairs of state to busy themselves about. So, my brethren, though the children, the fools and the rabble of the world are much affected and taken with such pollutions and mixtures as make up a glorious, pompous worship. Yet you that have a spirit of holiness and principles of holiness in you, oh, how you should slight such things, and pass by such things as things below you, as things not worthy of you, who have a holy God, a holy Christ, 
a holy gospel and a holy worship to busy your thoughts, your minds, your heads and your hearts about. 